Hey, welcome back. Bad news for home buyers out there this morning. The average interest rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage, the most popular way to purchase a house, climbed above 7%, according to Freddie Mac, which is the highest level in 21 years. Mortgage rates have more than doubled since the start of the year as the Federal Reserve continues to hike interest rates in its quest to rein in high inflation. The Fed meets again next week and is expected to increase rates yet again. Joining us now to help us better understand what this all means for the real estate market specifically is Jacob Channel, a senior economist at Lending Tree, and Rogers Healy, owner and CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies. Thank you both so much for being here. I'll start with you, Jacob. Uh, with mortgage rates still at decades high levels, what does this all indicate about where the market is actually headed? Yeah, so it seems to be suggesting, and the evidence of this has already been borne out, that the market is definitely slowing down. Uh, as you can imagine, when rates double in less than a year, uh, people are much less inclined to buy houses. And this is especially true when rates are up from record lows. So what we're seeing right now is the market is really starting to cool down. A lot of people are saying, okay, I'm not going to buy a home right now. Maybe I'll do it later. Uh, so what you're seeing is, as a result, kind of a ripple effect where consumer demand is down, and then now we're also starting to see prices come down a little bit. Now, there is one quick caveat that I should give. Uh, while prices are starting to come down a little bit, they're actually still higher than they were last year. Uh, so I think that just goes to show, if nothing else, that the market is actually very resilient, all things considered, even if it is showing signs of starting to finally slow down. All right, Rogers, to you now. Who is the current real estate market better for right now, buyers or sellers? I know there's a lot of people out there that may be in the market for a home, right, and say, okay, I need to own property, own a home, build equity in that way. Uh, but this, I mean, it's, it's decades high. I mean, that's really um, intimidating. So who's winning here, buyers or sellers? I think everybody's winning. And I think, again, if you flash back to six months ago and prior when our rates were literally half of what they were now, you got to put it in, in perspective. If you're going to go and pay or if you're going to sell for an all-time high, for the most part, you're going to go buy for an all-time high. So you're, you're kind of trading equity for equity. And right now, you know, we're seeing a different version of it. But obviously, the rates have definitely changed things, to, to Jacob's point. But on top of that, too, historically, residential real estate is seasonal. So this time of year normally is slower. We go in from, from Thanksgiving until probably Valentine's Day. It's normally slower. So we're, th we're seeing things get back to pre-COVID cycles, but it's definitely slowed down. But I do think people that are looking to get a deal right now, on paper, it might be a better deal than it was six months ago. But again, if they're going to go stack their chips and sell and try to get into something different, it's kind of the same game we had six months ago. It's just not as exciting maybe for a seller. But I think that, you know, real estate, you don't have to make a decision in 45 seconds. It's not like you're waiting for an iPhone to come out and you have 50 other people behind you. You know, it's, it's a business decision. And I think that also happened the last few months where it started to stabilize, you know, and bring something to residential real estate we've really never had. And that's intelligent people working behind the scenes. So, you know, it's definitely different, but I don't think it's necessarily better for a buyer or a seller right now. It's just, it's normal. Interesting. Uh, Jacob, in a report by the Mortgage Bankers Association, it noted that more buyers are applying for adjustable rate mortgages. Can you walk us through kind of what the pros and cons are of that type of loan? Sure, yeah. So adjustable rate mortgages are definitely more popular this year than they were last. Uh, not only you, know, you cited the, the NBA report, the Lending Tree, we also came out with a report that found that the number of arms being offered is more than doubled uh, from what it was last year. I think it's actually more than triple. Uh, so really the big pro of an adjustable rate mortgage is that they tend to come with a lower introductory rates. Uh, so what that means is that you know if you're comparing an adjustable rate mortgage to a uh, say 30 year fixed rate mortgage, the adjustable rate mortgage, at least in the short term, is probably gonna have a, a lower rate. Now the con is that there's that whole adjustable part um, as the name you know implies. Uh, and what that means is that over time, your rate can actually increase. So in a worst case scenario, what you could end up with is a situation where you've got an adjustable rate mortgage, you're able to keep up with your mortgage payments, and then after you know five years or so, your rate goes up and suddenly you can no longer afford your payments. And that's actually one of the big reasons why the housing market crashed in 2008 was there were a lot of people who had adjustable rate mortgages who no longer could afford to make their payments. And as a result, the market was flooded with homes uh, because people had either the option to try to sell their house or to just default on their mortgage. Uh, so I'm not trying to scare people. I'm not saying that adjustable rate mortgages are inherently evil. Uh, there certainly can be short-term benefits to them, and if rates never go up, then you could potentially even have a lower rate on your adjustable rate mortgage and a lower payment. 
With that said, I think the uncertainty of them um, can make them kind of dangerous in some instances, especially if you're not in a position where you can handle your, your monthly mortgage payment increasing. All right, Rogers, uh, really briefly here, we only have a, a little bit left here. Um, but for people who, uh, Rogers, this is for you, people who are considering buying or selling but are hesitant to get in the market right now, what do you think will get them to make a move? Is it a drop in interest rates or home prices they should be looking at? I think it's an adjust in reality. And I think that if people are looking at playing the short game, that's where you're going to win right now. And, and, and kind of to Jacob's point, you know, the, the saying that we're used to saying now here in Dallas, which is a fairly insulated city and we've got what everyone else doesn't have we have an influx of people moving here you know on a daily basis you, you marry the house and you date the rate so get in right now and obviously if you fall in love with something find a way to get it and then as you know the market kind of adjusts in the next six months if rates go down to four and a half five percent you know get it get it back for the longer term but yeah i think play the short game and on top of that too what we have is we have the highest rental rates in the history of the united states averaging two thousand dollars per month across the country so you know the logic factor is eventually going to go and settle in if people are going to buy something maybe in a neighborhood they weren't in love with initially that becomes home for a couple years you know they build equity they move on to the next place but you know i think we've got a really safe real estate environment ahead of us believe it or not Wherever you are, whether you're in the Northeast, you're in the South, you're in the Midwest, it doesn't matter because we have millennials driving the market and baby boomers. So, you know, get in, play the short game, find something that makes sense, build equity, and then eventually, you know, in two to three years, hire someone like me to go and help you find something different. <laughs> All right. Jacob Channel, Senior Economist at Lending Tree and Rogers Healy, owner and CEO of Rogers Healy Companies. Thank you both for joining us. We'll be back after a break. <laughs>